What's good, y'all, man? I ain't gonna lie. I just reacted to some shit that pissed me the fuck off. Y'all gonna see it probably before this, but... Yeah, bro. We reacting to Tyson Holyfield. Not the full fight. Fuck no. Why Mike Tyson bit Evander, Evander Holyfield's ear twice? I just be thinking watching of him on TV. His animal instincts were often seen in matches when he went berserk with his opponents. And as wild as it sounds, Mike actually bit his opponents here off, disqualifying ah, himself from the match hurt, huh? and incurring heavy penalties. Sounds surreal? Join us in today's video to find out how it all transpired and what happened following this bizarre event. Lead up to his first fight versus Evander Holyfield, Holyfield. November 1996 was not the first time the two boxers came face to face. Right. They had known each other since their teenage days. I don't know. Um, how, do you, how do you explain it? You know, we've known each other for a long time since we were kids. They had a sparring session and a showdown over a pool table, which Mike had no recollection of. Holyfield always claimed that Mike never stood up to him. I ain't gonna lie. Against other fighters. I could be cool. I couldn't be that Mike cool all the time. Here. Like, I, like, we can and hash it out. The two not finally got me. an opportunity to settle their beef in the boxing ring. Mike Tyson was released from prison in March 95. of 1995, and he was absolutely jacked. He was in the best shape of his life and could kill anyone with his menacing glare. Despite the odds, Holyfield shockingly pulled off the impossible and stopped Tyson in the 11th round. The second fight against Holyfield and the Earbit incident. Holy! There was so much on the line for Tyson in the second fight. He was on his way to gaining back his popularity the as the baddest man on the video. planet we after his upset against Buster Douglas. Ooh. He was decimating his opponents after his comeback, and Holyfield took that away Holyfield. from him. Holyfield. Holyfield was expected Holyfield. to be an easy fight as he was not completely healthy, but he stunned Mike no matter what. And the two met again at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas on June 28, 1997. Oh, Tyson was under a lot of pressure as his entire career was on the line. Apparently, Tyson was becoming extremely frustrated by Holyfield's use of his head. He complained he about Holyfield's headbutts in he the first fight, yeah, but the ref ruled them incidental. And the same thing happened in the second round of their second bout, but the referee Mills Lane ruled it incidental. In the third round, the two were going at it, as Holyfield complained that, that Tyson nigga had said, chunk out Oh my the god! The referee continued the fight after and he pushed him. However, Tyson did Honestly, y'all, what would y'all have done if y'all was Evander Holyfield? That nigga Mike bit his ear off, then looked down at it. What are you gonna do about it? I bit your ear off. That nigga turns around, put, what are you gonna do about it? What would y'all do? What would y'all do? If a man bit your ear off, looked at it, and then pushed you afterwards. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't even about to say what I'm about to say. Again, and then a chunk of Holyfield's what? left ear, what? which ended up stopping the fight. And Holyfield was declared the winner via disqualification. Tyson was so frustrated by the headbutts and said he was blacking out a little. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, I gotta go home, my kids are gonna be scared of me, look at me, man. What are you gonna do now, because of your career, Mike? What are you gonna do? As a direct consequence of the year, by his anger forced him to take such a step. As he said, I just wanted to kill him. Anybody I just wanted to kill him. See the headbutts were so over. I was furious, an undisciplined soldier, and I lost my composure. Then, chaos ensued. The crowd went crazy and threw everything they could on Tyson. He was hit by a water bottle as he was making his way back to the dressing room. Shots were fired in the grand lobby as many called it one of boxing's gloomiest nights. That was not just it. The Nevada State Athletic Commission fined Tyson $3 million and revoked his boxing license, which was reinstated a year later. And I knew that Michael George Tyson's boxing license would be revoked and further knew that Michael George Tyson had an administrative fine of not $3 million and that he also be assessed for all costs of these proceedings. However, Mike was never the same after the fight. It was a terminal blow to his career, and the downward trajectory of his career had started. Damn. He then went on to lose to Lennox Lewis in 2002, Lennox. Danny Williams in 2004, and the final match against Kevin McBride in June 2005. <laughs> Apologies. Well, after many years, Tyson realized that what he did was actually uncalled for. And the bitterness between the two could not have been dragged on for long as both knew each other before they made a name for themselves right. in the professional boxing All right, so world. yeah, they've been cool. Later, he did issue an apology, which was not considered sincere. Tyson at that time was not apologetic for his actions, and it appeared as if he was forced to do it. I will never do it again. I apologize to the world, to my family, and to the Nevada State Athletic Commission that has always treated me fairly. 
However, in 2009, when Mike Tyson was not the fiercest man on the planet, sitting together with Holyfield on the Oprah Winfrey show, admitted that his actions that night were born largely out of frustration with Holyfield getting the better of him. I was just pissed off that he was such a great fighter. People who love me don't have to say Evander this guy that guy. This is a beautiful guy. We watched each other grow and become established as team fighters. And I just want you to know that it's a pleasure passing through life being acquainted with you. He said the same to Larry King when he was questioned about what was going through his mind when he bit his ear. As Tyson was mature and no longer his younger self, he said very apologetically that he was sorry for his actions. Did you say in the ring that you were sorry? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Were you sorry? Well, not that, not that moment I was sorry. <laughs> not at that moment I was sorry. <laughs> the relationship between the two today, Tyson and Hollyfield, have a very good relationship today. Tyson invited Hollyfield on his podcast, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. They joked about the incident, laughed, and talked about all the battles they went through. In 2013, they filmed a Foot Locker commercial, booking fun about, about the incident. That. And in 2014, Hollyfield introduced Tyson to the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. The two have reached a point in their lives where they can put their egos aside and talk about all the good times. They have nothing but respect for each other as they both have been the best at what they did at some point in their lives. During the launch of their product, Holy Ears, Hollyfield <laughs> said, Mike, and I have a long history of competition and respect for one another. Holy years. And that night changed both of our lives. No, I'm not going to lie, bro. I'm not going to lie, bro. That's mad, though. <laughs> I don't know. Me, me, and me, I, I would be pissed this nigga bit a piece of my ear off. But, bro, it's dope that they were somehow able to still be cool after that, bro. That's mad, dope, man. More videos on the way. Yes, sir. Hey, come back. Hi. You already know, man. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, man. Hit the bell so you can be notified every time I upload a video. Look ugly, man. So I walk around the way I do, man. I don't be worrying about none of these motherfuckers, man. Word up, man. God is my motherfucking bodyguard. Word the mother.